was all about uh, quiz conforms versus Power Apps. And I thought I'd start off by just doing a quick point around Power Apps. I'm not going to do demonstration of Power Apps or anything else like that, but just to set the scene around what we're going to be talking about. And for me, I, I use Power Apps reasonably regularly. Um, and I find it hard work. And I've been working with SharePoint um, and Office 365 and the other surrounding tool sets for over 15 years. Um, I guess at the core, the problem for me with Power Apps is who is it really designed for? This concept of power users, or who exactly are those users? Is it Are they developers? Are they end users? Are they SharePoint administrators? It's really difficult to say. I think they're actually quite a small group of people, quite specialist people. And that doesn't lend itself to being a, a form solution which is accessible to a wide um, array of people. Personally, I find it's very difficult to achieve very much in Power Apps without resorting to code. You can do some simple layout pieces, but pretty soon you either need to write simple functions um, or you need to delve much deeper into code. And that's really a barrier. Even writing a function is a barrier to an, a site owner, an end user who wants to just build a simple form in their SharePoint site. Power Apps, and we're talking about the Canvas version of Power Apps here, um, is very much designed for mobile devices and not for desktops. You know, when you design a Power App, you have the choice of designing it for a mobile or a tablet, not for your SharePoint form. That's almost like a secondary afterthought. And fundamentally, when you load something in Power Apps in SharePoint, it doesn't look like SharePoint. It has that funny blue loading screen. It takes ages to load. And even when it does load, it looks alien. It doesn't look like something which is part of your SharePoint experience. And so that's why we're going to be talking about QuizCom forms today, and specifically the modern variant. Um, it's a completely modern feel um, working within SPFX. Um, it's leveraging Microsoft's fluent UI design system. So it's fully responsive. So whichever um, device you're working on, um, however big your screen is, it will work. It will, re it will respond to those. Um, without having to design multiple different screens like you might have to do within Power App. So it's very much one solution for desktop and mobile. And it supports a number of the other QuizCom features which we'll talk about today. QuizCom Forms is designed very much for non-technical end users. So a, a business user, and that's very much what SharePoint and Teams is about nowadays. It's about these um, every person in your business potentially being able to create forms, um, manage lists, work with documents, and be able to enhance those capabilities very quickly. You can very easily create forms and do a number of things in terms of the layout, the logic, the interconnectivity of those forms without the need to code. However, if you are a developer or you, you work with a developer, there's opportunities to do more but using languages which they're familiar with, not the sort of alien concepts which come with Power Apps. So what sort of things can we do? Well, we can lay out forms. We can lay out forms really simply on the page um, across multiple tabs. We can introduce conditional logic to hide and show components um, based on rules we define. And we can define things like default values as well. We can introduce um, multi-row forms. So that idea of header and child items, replacing a little bit like it, those of you who remember InfoPath, we had sort of repeating row capabilities there when we were doing things like expenses forms, order forms, uh, site surveys, or whatever it might be where you need to have some core header information and then a number of sub items. And we can also, as well as making those sub items we can make them sub files so if you need to manage multiple files associated to maybe something like a, a case um, then you can do that sort of thing what's this sort of stuff like in power apps instead so these sort of capabilities which i talked about and i'm going to show you how easy they are to work with in um, quizcom forms well it's code like i say i need to write functions Perhaps I even need to write much more complex code. And the form layout is not a nice user intuitive um, 
experience. It's a complex grid type system, which again is not suited to those non-technical end users. I did mention that we can extend the capability of Quizcom forms using scripts, which developers are familiar with. So they can go and write their own JavaScript scripts. But Quizcom also make loads of samples available, which are really easy to customize. So it's a great starting point for a developer. Or even if you're someone like me who is not a developer, then I can actually take one of these scripts and run with them and make my own customizations. What sort of things can we do? We can, we can do live calculated fields. So as we fill in data, we'll see the, um, fields being calculated live on screen. We can pull through additional lookup information. So as we look up um, a certain field, we can pull through um, from another list, we can pull through additional information from that list. We can customize how buttons are labeled. We can set certain fields to be read only. We can pull through data from user profile. And we can also create wizard type experiences. So that idea of filling in a site survey or a questionnaire or something like that, where someone needs to be taken on a journey through multiple pages and to summarize that at the end. And although it's not primarily the topic of this webinar, the other thing to bear in mind is um, Quizcom Forms is not just about forms. Um, it's also got native workflow capabilities built in um, rather than it being a separate application like Power Automate, so another set of tools you've got to learn. And the, the sort of workflow capability is built up of two components, activity being something which it will do, such as add an item, send an email, um, with built-in options for um, variables in there. And then a custom action, which is almost like our workflow, which does a specific thing, and that will pull together multiple activities. So for example, um, add an item to this SharePoint list, and then um, send an email. And those um, actions can either be called manually, like with a button, so someone chooses to consciously do that, like escalate a case, or that it's done automatically as part of a form being filled in and certain data being populated. And obviously one of the most important things um, which has become so um, such a key tool for so many organizations over the last 18 months, Microsoft Teams. And it's pretty much expected of any application nowadays working in the Microsoft 365 space that it works with Teams. And the great news is, is Quizcom Forms does. It works seamlessly with Teams. We don't have to think about how we're gonna design our form for use in Teams or add it as an additional app inside of Teams or anything like that. If you add your list, then the form will continue to use the quiz form experiences, which you see within SharePoint. So all of those same customizations will work directly inside of Teams. Okay, so that's a little bit um, enough of me talking just for now. And we'll do a few demos and then we'll wrap up and with some questions as well, um, as Sarah said. So what I'll do is I'll show you some of the basics of quiz forms. And then we can always, uh, and then we'll look at some of, some other examples during the course of the demos. What I'll do is I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can all see it because I have quite a big um, screen here. So I'm not going to a regular SharePoint site. I've got a number of lists here because this is um, quite a complex demo environment. But I'm going to start off over here with my cases list. So I want to track some cases. And at the moment, I've only got the ability to have a title and a name of a person who raised that specific request. Now, what I want to do is I next want to record, well, actually, um, where's this person logging their ticket from? Um, and I've already got some supporting lists. So I've got a list of offices, a couple of cities, and then I've got some locations against those offices. So what I want to do and what I would like to build in into my form is I'd like to build in the ability to um, just record both the um, location, I'm oh, sorry, the office and the location, but I want them to be interdependent. So I want to set my office and then that 
restrict my options for location. And we can do that really simply. And we're doing this all directly in the browser. I'm not having to open something else up. So I can come in here and can configure. And I've got a number of different QuizCom apps in here um, deployed, and there are obviously some different licensing flavors available to you as well. So I'm going to look at the form layout. And this is how, where I can configure the layout of my form, which we'll come to in a second. But what I, what I want to do first is I want to um, add um, a lookup. And QuizCom Forms comes with something called cascading lookup. And if I select that, I can come in and I can define a lookup column with some extra options far beyond what we see natively within SharePoint. Again, watch this, I'm not writing any code here. So um, do I want to create a column or do I want to um, create a new one? Well, I don't have one configured already. So let's create one for Office, yeah? This will then immediately present me with some options. First thing to notice is, I can target this to another site, so I can do lookups from other sites. That's quite cool, yeah? And then I can come in here and I can select, well, what am I looking at? So I'm looking at my offices list, yeah? What column am I choosing from that list? And I can filter or sort items. So I can put some restrictions. So if I wanted to restrict it to a specific view, I could do. So maybe I have only active or inactive items in my in my list which I'm looking up and I want to exclude so just and just do the active items so I can do that sort of thing really simple I'm happy with that and I've set that column up yeah um if I go back to my cases list this is pretty simple yeah I've just got a standard drop down here yeah Let's go and add in my additional cascading column. And this time it gets a little bit more complicated, yeah? So my one I created already is there, but I wanna create a new one. So I wanna create one for location. In this case, I'm targeting the location list. Again, I'm selecting the title column. Um, and then I could filter columns from this target list. So I can go in and say, well, actually I'm interested in only those which have an office, yeah? And that needs to match the office defined in my other list. Okay. Now, hopefully, if I've done that right. Don't know why that's done that. Let's just uh, jump out of that and go back to my list. There we go. Now, hopefully, if I come in and I select an office, yeah, I'll only see options for a specific office, yeah? Now, I've set that up in less than a minute. Um, how long would that take me in Power Apps? Well, firstly, I'd have to work out how to do it. Then I'd have to write the code. It would take me at least half an hour probably, and I sort of know what I'm doing around it. If I was an end user, I'd probably have given up by now. Okay, so we've got some columns on the form. Let's look at how we lay that out a little bit. So I touched on it before actually, we can lay our form out in a certain way. So if we come in here to configure, I can choose form layout. And this allows me to define certain tabs. So let's say I want to just have a tab called uh, case details, yeah? I can then quickly come in here and start to design how I want this form to be laid out. So let's say I want the title there, yeah? And then I can go in and add another row. So I can go raised by, yeah? And then I could come and add another row here. And I could say, well, actually, I'm looking at office. And look how easy it is to just adjust these columns and introduce new um, columns. And I can actually make these um, bigger or smaller to my specific needs. Um, other things to note is I can add conditions here. So if I want to control that a certain um, uh, tab is only shown under certain conditions, I can do that sort of thing as well. I can quickly preview to see what my form looks like. Yeah, that looks good. 
And then I can just go ahead and save that. And just to prove that that wasn't anything um, other than the truth, I can come in here. I can access my form straight away. Much easier, much really nicely laid out. OK, what else can I do? Well, I've got a table. I've got another list here with some case notes in. And what I want to do is have like the ability to have some repeating uh, rows in here. So to be able to add multiple case notes to my case, I can do that really simply. So let's go back and let's modify my form. And what we need to do is we need to create a uh, repeating row column. So I'm going to create a column in my cases list, which will then store my, which will be basically my column, which repeats. So I can do that. Again, I haven't got one at the moment, so I'll just call it notes. Yeah. Again, I'm selecting where's my list here. So in this case, case notes. And then what um, what columns do I want? I can define all sorts of great things. So I can define the number of rows which I want to make visible by default. I can define whether I want to allow people to add rows. And then I can define which columns I want to um, include in my list. So I'm going to have the date and I'm going to have the title column there. Um, and I can define various other things like total columns and widths and other things like that. So that's configured my column. Um, and now I need to go back to form layouts and I actually need to add my column in. But what I want to do is I actually want to put that in a separate tab, a separate area for my case notes. So I'm going to add a new tab. And then I'm going to come in and add a, a row. And in this case, I can then should be able to select notes as a column. So that's my repeating table. I might choose to come in here and say, well, actually, I want to put a condition on here. So I'm only interested in showing case notes. If, for instance, say something like uh, location equals a certain value or even a current user meets a certain condition. So that that's really useful if we want to control um, when tabs are shown, it might be that it's part of the way through the journey, maybe the case reaches a certain status, or maybe only certain users within a certain security group would see a specific tab, you know, maybe the you know, case administrator or, or whatever it might be would see that tab. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I just wanted to call out a couple of other things, which we won't dive into in too much detail today, but just so you're aware of them. So we've got the ability to um, set default values here. So that's where we want to maybe set default values around certain fields under certain conditions. I can also do dynamic column permissions. And that's about what well, I showed you there conditionally saying, um, actually, um, I want to do this for a, um, I want to hide a tab. Actually, I'm interested in setting a condition around a certain column to say, actually show or hide this column um, or lock that column based on certain conditions. Finally, we can also do validation. So we can go in and show and actually define specific validation which will then introduce messages if it doesn't reach that um, condition. And I'll show you a couple of examples of this once we finish this demo. Um, it's really useful with things like numerical fields or if people have put incorrect formatting or just not filled in a certain field, you can guide them on that journey. I'm just going to return to my form. I'm just showing you this form with that. Uh, Cascading lookup. And here's my case notes. So I've got a repeating table where I can add in multiple rows of data and I can continue to add rows of data. So I've achieved very quickly that parent child, that header footer, expenses, orders, case notes, all of those sort of capabilities, which I've really been able to um, introduce really, really quickly. 
And so I built up a form with some simple layouts really quickly and introduced all sorts of functionality. Let's show you a few other examples of what we can do. And we'll also touch on some of that slightly more advanced logic, which is open to perhaps slightly more technical people, such as developers. So firstly, here, I've got an employees list. And this employees list allows me to keep records of employees. So often we see requirements around things like HR forms or other things like that. And as well as storing the employee um, details, so we can fill in some information here, I've got that uh, ability to select a department. I've got that same cascading lookup again. Um, I'll enter an employee number here. And then I've got the ability to introduce some assets. So what things do they um, uh, have? Well, maybe I have um, an iPhone, yeah? And it's a phone and it's been assigned on a certain date. And maybe it has a value against it. I don't know the value of phones anymore, but say it's $500. And look how it's doing a calculation there. And if I put two, for instance, and I go laptops, and I select a specific date. And in this case, let's say this is $1,000. It's doing a calculation on my row. And that's because I've introduced some scripts here to um, do that calculation, but also to make this specific cell read only. And this is done doing it on the fly. So as I change the value, it's updating it as well. And we can do that really simply. So we have the ability to have a script editor here. Also, I'm not going to delve into this too much today, but we can also do introduce styles as well. So if we want um, to in introduce our own style and look and feel, we can do. In most cases, we want it to look like our actual SharePoint site, which we'll do natively. But we might want to introduce some other specific styling. If I come in here, I'm opening like a script editor experience. And you can see here I've actually got two different scripts here. Now, don't worry, I don't have to, and if you're not comfortable writing these sort of scripts, you don't have to worry about it because actually, um, QuizCon make a whole load of samples available to you. So for instance, you can set fields to appear read only, which is what I'm using here. And all I have to do is from their standard scripts is um, go and make the examples, which I want, which they add here, um, and customize them and modify them to my specific needs. Equally, I'm using an example here, which does a calculation. And you can see here that you're defining well, what's the value, what's the quantity, tax if you use it, and the total field. This is a pre-built script, and I can come in here and just use it and just type to choose a particular one I want. So I can either do a calculation price times quantity, or I can do price times quantity in a repeating row. So it's a reusable script, which has been defined. All I need to tweak is the field labels, for which I want. And there's a number of other ones, which I'll show you as we go through the demo. Um, it's got some ex event handlers there for people who are maybe a little bit more development minded and need to use those. So that's what we're doing there. Another thing I wanted to show you while I'm here, let me just uh, save my form briefly. Um, and then I'm going to go back in and edit it. In my asset screen, I've got just like a little tick box here. And I'm using that and I'm just using that um, logic built into the form layout to show or hide a uh, tab based on logic I define. So I'm just basically saying if my um, field is set to a certain value, then the tab will show. Otherwise, it won't show. So we can see here on the documents, that it's got a condition associated with it. If store documents is set to yes, then it will show it. Otherwise, it won't. That sort of thing could take me ages to do in Power Apps. This, it's taken, it would take me seconds to configure that using QuizCon Forms. Let's go back here because I just wanted to talk about that documents capability uh, in a little bit of detail. Um, so here I can come in and add a document. And what that will let me do is come and upload a specific file. 
and it will let me select a category. So let's see, uh, what have I got here? I might well have my uh, QuizCom webinar presentation. So I'll come and add that and I'll select a specific ca category. I'm now actually, and I can come in and add additional rows if I wanted to, I'm not going to. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my form. And what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna upload my document into an associated document library that document continues to be available within my um, documents tab so I can access it directly in, in contacts. Maybe it's case files or other things like that. Um, but actually within my document library, it will then also create a folder for each employee and store that document there with my category. So really nicely, that sort of slightly better capability than just adding an attachment and the fact you can add multiple rows of those and categorize them is a really great piece of functionality. Okay, let's have a look at um, a couple more examples. Um, so I'm taking here a site audit and I mentioned that idea of a wizard mode. If we come and look at that, I can come here and I can actually start to complete my site audit. So let's say audit of uh new york office yeah and uh, so we're all to the new york due date i've got a timer control here so i'm using a custom column here to actually manage that sort of timer experience and look here how it says next rather than save and that's because i'm taking myself on a journey and i've now opened a new tab by clicking next and i'm then filling in additional information yeah and I can come here and go next. And I've got a validation. I must enter some issue details. So I've again, using that um, validation capability with QuizCon Forms, I'm introducing some validation. So um, uh, let's go ahead and uh, enter some details. I'm then taken through to a summary screen. So this wizard mode gives me a summary capability to view it all. I might even want to use things like QuizCon Print to then print that off. Um, so I've got a physical copy or even, um, again, um, QuizCon capability to save it off as a PDF. And then my audit is submitted. So how does this all work? So there's a couple of things going on here. Firstly, um, in my script editor, I've used a pre-built sample for um, turn tab form into wizard mode. And it's pretty much as simple as that. That will automatically just start working and it will go through your tabs in order. I've also done um, that validation, which we've talked about. I've got some field constraints. And here I've got, I'll uh, expand it so we show you. So I'm saying if, uh, if it's, if it, um, the success of this is if it's not empty, it's successful. So that's good. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I must show this message. So you're valid, uh, validating a sort of successful um, thing that could be there's some details in it, or maybe it's over a certain value, for example, if you or under a certain value, if you might say, well, actually, anything over a certain value needs to be sent to a certain person for approval. Um, or, you know, can't be entered on this form or whatever it might be. So you need to think about, well, what's your successful logic? And then what's the message which you show if it fails? Um, okay, and then I'm going to show you one last example today, um, which is again using some of these scripting capabilities. And I've got a little equipment reservation uh, list here. And if I come in here, it's similar to the sort of stuff we've seen before. So I'm just entering a date. I want to reserve a piece of equipment for a certain amount of time. And I've got a drop down list of um, categories. Yeah. And I can then select a specific piece of equipment. And that will pull through um, a description and also a picture of it. So again, we're using those scripts to pull through some information. 
pull through additional fields. It doesn't have to be an image, but sometimes you've got additional columns in your lookup list which you want to pull through. Um, let's go and reserve another item of equipment. Or let's actually try and uh, set another one up here. So uh, let's go and say, well, actually, I want to reserve again another piece of equipment for today. Look at that. That piece of equipment, which I already reserved for today and tomorrow, is not available. So again, I'm putting some uh, additional rules in place to control whether something's available as an option or not. This is all controlled in our script concept. So firstly, we've got a script here, which is um, additional columns from lookup item. There is a option for that. You can even do it within repeating rows, which is quite nice. So maybe you just select something in a repeating row and you pull through additional things. Maybe you're putting a quote together and you select a product and you want to pull through like a description of that product, you could do that within rows of items, like in a sales scenario. But I'm actually just using um, lookup columns here. And all I'm doing is saying, well, um, what's my lookup column field name? So all I've had to change is this, the red element, yeah? Um, my, my column is called equipment. What are the fields which I'm pulling through? Description, image, title. And what fields do I want to set in my list? So there's fields which are expecting this information. So I've got additional fields which are sort of read only and I'm setting that. Um, I can then also set certain fields to be uh, read only. So I'm setting that description and image to be read only. And then I've got this additional filter capability to filter out those uh, or make those items read only um, based on that start date and end date. So that sort of thing where when I try to select a piece of equipment which has already been booked, um, I was able to do that. And again, I'm just using a sample to be able to um, achieve that. So options for um, where you maybe want more um, advanced for capability and as long as you're not totally overawed by scripts then you can make those sort of changes and if you have development capability then you can do that um, and take that further okay so that wraps up our demos today let's return to um, my slide deck just for a couple of slides and then we'll take a few questions First thing to say is this is super easy to install. So um, you can actually go directly to the QuizCom website and um, enter your SharePoint site URL and it will take you through the installation process of the app. Um, as administrators or if any of you are administrators or you want to work with your administrators, you can also deploy it to all the whole of your tenant. So let's wrap things up with just a key from some key points. And it's worth remembering that this webinar is about uh, QuizCon Forms and how it compares to Power Apps. So the first thing to say is QuizCon Forms is very much designed for non-technical business users, end users. It's, it's simple to do things like change the layout of my SharePoint list, um, introduce things like cascading lookups, repeating rows, so behavior and how fields work. We can set things like um, field constraints, so that validation around fields. We can do things like show and hide fields or tabs based on conditions. We can also set things like default values based on certain scenarios as well. So we have a lot of ability to control layout, um, logic, and introduce complexity around fields. It's very much built with SharePoint in mind. This is about enhancing your SharePoint lists. Um, it's native, it's not um, taking data off into some other tenant, it's not running a separate application, it looks like SharePoint. We can implement all of those business rules and logic which we saw in those examples without the need to introduce code. 
you know, doing things like just a cascading lookup or even things like field validation, you need to understand how to write little functions, little pieces of code within Power Apps. There's no need to do that. So you can achieve so much without any of that. But for developers, it, it uses languages that you should understand. You know, most developers should know how to work with JavaScript. And with those samples provided, then um, it's very easy for someone who's semi-technical, someone like me, or um, even people who are just a slightly, um, some technical capability to read through a sample and be able to make some really simple field changes um, and achieve what they want um, if they need to. And with that, I'm going to wrap up. Um, but um, I hope there's been a few questions as we've gone through, um, which Sarah's been collecting, and um, we'll try our best to.